macro market trends, stock selection, ETFs, options, just some of the topics covered in Cook's Kitchen. Is the correction completely off the table? I used that phrase last week, off the table, sort of in an offhand way. A correction is never completely off the table. I always talk in terms of probabilities. But today I'm going to give you some strong evidence why I think you can buy any dip to 1650 and we're looking for new highs uh, as we head into the fourth quarter. All right, let's go to the charts. First up, uh, the McClellan breadth, well, it's the McClellan oscillator, but we're going to look at the breadth thrust. Uh, and this is a phenomena where the McClellan oscillator dips to 100. Usually you like to see it go below 100 and then has this strong reversal. Now, you know, this is a sign of capitulation. Remember, the uh, McClellan oscillator uh, smooths out advanced decline statistics, on, in this case, uh, the NIMO on the New York Stock Exchange. So you're talking, you know, over 2,500 stocks and it takes advanced decline statistics, you know, measures of accumulation distribution and smooths it out into an oscillator. Uh, McClellan invented this, you know, what, back in the 60s, I think. Uh, and, it, and this vehicle really works, this oscillator works to tell you when you've seen a washout and buyers are coming back in. So back to the chart here. Let's look at some of the, that have happened in the past. So this goes back into 2012. Here was the, uh, the spring and summer June correction in 2012. And, you know, big dip here below 100 on the McClellan oscillator. And then, and then you finally got the bread thrust into the summer. Uh, more recently, we just had it in uh, June and July. Um, you know, pierced 100, you know, took some time to get through there, but there was your bread thrust back above 50 on the McClellan oscillator. That's where we are now. All right, next, let's look at where uh, strength has really shown up. You know, we looked at uh, some charts last week. I've been, you know, buying the, the triple Qs on and off here. Broke out to new highs while other indexes didn't. And I've just got 10, 20, and 40 day uh, moving averages on here of the Qs. You know, this is, uh, you know, NASDAQ stocks leading the way. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, 60% technology, 20% consumer discretionary, and about 15% biotech make up the NASDAQ 100. You know, so you're seeing, uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, four-letter symbol stocks just uh, cruising to new highs. You know, the bears will say, well, this always happens near a top, that you're, you get these blow-off rallies in, uh, you know, in these hyper-growth stocks with, with P.E. multiples, you know, over 50. Um, I think that there's a lot of investors who are picking these stocks for growth looking out you know, six to 12 months. All right, next, let's take a look at the S&P on a weekly basis, because I want to show you something here about where the bears are looking for, trying to call a top here again. Let's go back to, so again, these are weekly bars, and I've got 10, 20, and 40 week moving averages on here. Good indicators of trend on the weekly chart. So here was the 2011 top. You know, tops are a process, right? Look how long this one took. It dragged out for, you know, seven months. Um, and then we had an event in August, the debt ceiling battle. So bears will say, hey, we're, you know, we're now creating this uh, right shoulder of a head and shoulders right here. That's what they're looking for. That's what they're hoping for. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, the, the way we tested 1630 down here and found responsive buyers, I think 1650 holds. And I think you can be a buyer there. Now, obviously, the wild card is we're going into the FOMC next week. Um, you know, but one of the, I think, a high probability play is that if we get a knee-jerk reaction lower, that will be a dip to buy on the FOMC. All right, let's look at a couple more charts. Um, here's the Dow. Okay. Now, the Dow has been a weaker index here. Um, you know, IBM falling down. But, uh, and, and we were actually long. We ended up scratching a trade. We, we you know, say we got long just over 15,000 and wrote it down to the bottom here and then, and then got out when it came back up. Uh, this is also a weekly chart. Now, this past two days of rally, you know, we, yesterday we tried to buy the Dow in the morning because of the index changes where they booted out. Uh, you know, Bank of America brought in Goldman Sachs, out with Hewlett Packard, in with Nike. Um, 
and these changes I thought would be you know, positive for the Dow overall. They're, they're getting rid of low price stocks, bringing in higher price stocks. It doesn't, doesn't automatically boost the index because they're going to adjust the divisor, but, but overall I, I thought it was healthy for the Dow. And so, and the Dow is so oversold, we wanted to be in it. I ended up chasing the trade yesterday and couldn't get in, um, but I'm looking for, for a new entry in the Dow soon. Uh, and because it's going to follow along. The S&P makes new highs, you know, the Qs make new highs, and obviously the Russell. We looked at the Russell last week, and I said, you know, you, you could look at buying it around 1,000. Uh, it's going to follow if the rest of the market goes. All right, last thing. Um, here is my map from August 18th. I just want to review it because I said it's good up to the FOMC, so you're not going to see this one again. I've actually revised the probabilities uh, for my group where... You know, basically, you're looking at going back into here is only a 20% chance now, so one in five. Uh, and correction to me uh, is back down to, we'll say, 10% possibility of, uh, of taking out 1,600 and then seeing a bigger correction. Because if we do go down and take out 1,600, let, let's put it this way. If we take out 1,630 and then 1,600, yeah, a bigger correction is going to be on. And, it, you know, it, it probably means there's some full-scale distribution in play. Uh, so my, my map is now shifting the probabilities upward, and obviously the FOMC, I, I think so much of taper is priced in. So even, even no taper to $15 billion in taper, the market should not be surprised, and we can still go higher into October instead of having a classic fall correction. So looking back here, um, I think I raised the probability of a breakout to new highs uh, obviously, I raised it, but th this map was up to the FOMC. So really, I have to revise this uh, looking out now into the middle of October, and I see a 25% chance at least of breaking out to new highs above 1,700. So we'll have a, a fresh look at that map last week. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Energy. Uh, we're long energy, not because of Syria. I mean, that, that, that trade obviously worked for us. We, you know, we didn't know that Syria was coming, so we were able to take some profits. Last week on energy, we're back in now just because uh, oil is probably going to sustain above 100 bucks a barrel. And the, the production from some of these EMPs is really ramping up. These, these individual stocks are getting upgraded. Uh, estimates are lifting, so it's a good space to be in. All right, now if you... If you want to play this rally aggressively, obviously you look for the for the next dip, and you know maybe you pick up the uh, sectors and indexes that have been beaten down. Uh, so I'm looking at the Russell, uh, the triple Q's on any pullback because it's it's a strong leader right now, uh, and I want to add to energy. All right, that's my view for this week. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen, and we'll see you next week.